Hello everyone, this is Callie. Welcome to my channel. I'm so excited you're here because I have a special video using products from the Honey Bee Stamp Spring Release. I have been delaying on this video because my kids have been having lots of snow days here in Kansas City, Missouri. We are hunkered down at home and there are lots of distractions, but I managed to finally record this video, so I hope you'll enjoy it. This is a quick look at the products that I'm going to be using in today's video. This is not the full release by any means, but it is a beautiful release. That first floral set is called Eternal Love, and it's actually illustrated by Dawn from W Plus 9. Then we have some new Lovely Layers dies that I'm using in this release. That first one there was the Birdcage. And then we have a Vintage Flora red rubber stamp. It's going to be great for backgrounds and floral designs. And then we have the Lovely Layers Sweetheart Roses. Here are some Lovely Layers Lovebird dies. And then this final die is a Bold Backgrounds Vintage Roses die. And last but not least, we have a sentiment set that is called By Your Side. And it actually coordinates really well with the Lovebirds and Bird Cage dies, which takes us into our first card. For the Bird Cage dies, I'm just going to be using this ring here that the birds are going to be sitting on. It's such a great accent piece for the card. And then using the Eternal Love stamp set to save some time on this long video, which took me quite a long time to film and edit, stamp and colored and die cut all of the pieces that I was going to use for this video off camera. So all we have to do is ink blend. I've got my grip mat there that's stained with red ink and I'm just using it to hold down all my die cuts and I'll ink blend all the pieces here. I'm starting out with the Lovely Layers Lovebird dies and so I am just ink blending these parrots and you can make these birds super colorful in any colors that you would like, teals, blues, pinks. I am using some traditional parrot colors. I'm using some red on the head and blending yellow down to the green and into the blues. It's just a natural gradient of colors and it kind of imitates these parrots in real life. Sometimes when I have a lot to create and I have a creative block, I feel like imitating nature and just going the natural way about colors really takes a lot of the thinking out of it for me and makes the process a little bit easier and less stressful. I don't know about you, but I spend far too much time contemplating colors of ink Copics, as well as cardstock. So all that to say, when you want to take the guesswork out of it, go with nature's colors. So anyway, I have finished putting my love birds together and they are so sweet. Um, they were super easy to line up and put together. There are guides from Honeybee Stamps for you. So after I adhered them together, I adhered that ring on top of them, put an acrylic block over it to make sure that everything is secured nice and well together. And then I'm going to work on the background here using the Vintage Flora stamp. I wanted a more distressed feel, so I didn't stamp the entire image. I just pounced some ink on with a blending brush and then transferred the ink on with my fingers by pressing the backside of the cardstock. Now I'm going to frame this with the A2 scallop die. Then I'll attach my birds, making sure to center it. I'm using the grid marks on my glass board there to make sure everything lines up perfectly. Then I'll attach this to a card base. And then last but not least, I'm going to attach this little floral bouquet there at the bottom as if it was hanging off that bird ring. Then I'll finish with a embossed sentiment that I used from the Eternal Love stamp set as well. And I did forget the little parrot's feet, so I die cut those in gray and applied some gray ink on them to give them a little bit of shading. Then I applied their feet over that little crossbar on the ring, and then that finishes this card. Now moving on to our second card, we're going to be using the Lovely Layer Sweetheart Roses die. So again, I've die cut everything off camera, die cut everything in white except for that vase. On the stand, I die cut with cream cardstock because I'll be ink blending that with some brown ink. And I'm using two different colors of greens here on my foliage. If you are interested in the color combinations, be sure to check out my blog post. Everything will be listed there. It'll be at the top of the description box in this video so that you can go straight to the blog post where all the details will be listed for you. So it's a lot of redundant work here. I'm just ink blending all of the pieces. I've got my flowers arranged from the largest to smallest pieces. The smallest pieces are going to be on top. So I'm ink blending those lighter and for the pieces in the back I'm ink blending those darker. So I'm using three different colors here. A light pink, darker pink, and a purple. 
and it looks like a mess at first but once you start layering it a lot of that the ink splotchiness that you see is going to get covered up so I'm working my way here from the largest pieces to the smaller pieces and they're quite easy to stack and layer because the die cuts are designed in a way that makes it really intuitive as to where you're supposed to line up each piece. On this particular Sweetheart Roses set, there are four different flowers in four different sizes. So I'm just gonna stack them all together and then we can start piecing together these lovely layers. On the Sweetheart Rose foliage or bush, we are going to apply these little leaves that kind of stack over what's already there. And again, you can kind of tell where they go because they line up perfectly. I love how carefully thought through this die set is because it really adds a lot of depth and dimension to have those extra layers of leaves on top. And I really wanted more dimension. So I'm going in with that darker ink again and just applying more color at the tips and bases of all the leaves and foliage. Then I'm gonna go ahead and apply my flowers here. I'm gonna apply them in their spaces. Again, they perfectly line up, so it's really obvious where they should go. And I was looking at the digital mock-up for this set that I got, which will be in the package insert if you decide to buy this die. It'll show you how to line everything up and what it should look like. I realized I should have saved these bottom leaves to adhere last so that it looks like it's overflowing the planter for a more realistic look. So I just peeled off that bottom leaf and then pulled up a small section of this other leaf and then applied my planter and then glued it back down. So I'm adhering that other leaf now to look like it's overflowing on this planter vase and then attaching my large rose. Now for the background, I wanted some texture. So I did bring in the Spring Leaves A2 cover plate from a previous release. I trimmed off the sides to mat a card base and then I've attached my planter. And now to finish with a sentiment, I used one of the sentiments from the By Your Side sentiment stamp and die set. So that finishes my second card. It's more simple, but it's got lots of dimension and layers of color. My third and final card uses the Bold Backgrounds Vintage Roses die. These roses are a lot bigger and there are three different sizes and you need multiples of them. So I looked at the main die plate and made sure to cut enough flowers. So there are two large flowers three medium flowers, and three rose buds. I, again, am ink blending with a blend of colors and going from the darker colors in the back to lighter colors at the top of the flower or the smaller pieces. I hope that makes sense. For the main die from this set, which is the bold background, I'm ink blending the foliage with two colors of green again. I'm using a more vibrant green this time for this card, but as always, I use more than one color to make sure there's more depth and dimension to the ink blending. So here I'm going back in with a darker color, concentrating on the stems and bases of the leaves to add more depth and dimension. Now I'm going to go ahead and piece all of these flowers together. Again, it's a redundant process, but it's very quick to do. It's also very intuitive because of the way the flowers are designed. Now on these larger die cuts, Honeybee Stamps makes it real obvious what is going to be visible because the areas that are visible are etched with details. So it was super easy for me to identify where I should ink blend darker shading and where I can lay off on the ink so that I don't waste ink. Okay, so I am just finishing up here with some of the details on the petals. There are tiny little pieces that just make the flower pop. Then that yellow center of the flower just fits right into place to finish off the flower. I put that last flower together and now we can go ahead and attach this to our bold background that we ink blended. Everything again fits right into place where it's supposed to go. Everything is real obvious and it creates the most beautiful background. I love all the layers and all the texture and colors and just imagine all the different greens you can use and all the different color flowers you can use. This would make a really, really pretty floral set to gift to someone if you decide that's what you want to do. Once all the flowers are in place, I'm just going to apply this panel directly to a card base. Then for added interest, I am just going to splatter this whole entire panel with some white paint. For splattering, I just use inexpensive acrylic paint. I use a drop of white acrylic paint and a drop of water, mix the two together and splatter. And this goes for any color splattering that I, that I do. So it's super simple, super easy. 
For my sentiment, I'm using an older set called Busy Buzzwords. There are some great sentiment words and subsentiments on that stamp set and coordinating dies as well. So I'm using a mixture of the two. I've die cut the word hello out of gold glitter cardstock and then embossed the subsentiment to say sweet friend. So that finishes my third and final card using products from the Honey Bee Spring Release. I think we're just now reaching the halfway point of winter, but I am so looking forward to spring and all the flowers, and I hope this release inspires you. I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. I would really appreciate that. Thank you so much for watching. Again, if you're interested in any of the supplies that I use, be sure to check out the links below as well as on my coordinating blog post. Thank you so much for stopping by and have a wonderful day. Bye everyone.